Hey, welcome back to Let's Get Dirty Garage for part two of the uh, mini tubbing and quarter panel uh, adventure that we are running down. So um, with that, let's just get right into it and let's go ahead and let's get dirty. Is this thing on? Yeah. Okay, so here's where we left off last time. Uh, got that chopped out, but just wanted to show you guys. Um, this is basically that bed brace right here that um, it, it kind of runs. It's about that wide and kind of runs in a, in a U shape, but um, just got to trim that off. Show you down up here. Just got to trim that brace back um, and then we'll cap that brace off inside. Got to do a little bit of trimming up around the uh, around the edge there and make sure we're following the line and so on. But um, got that all cut off down around the, court, uh, the floor pan and down in the smuggler's box and that'll allow us to get that uh, inner all the way in. So here's the plan. We'll get this trimmed up and cleaned up um, in the right spot and so on. And then cap those, uh, cap that off and cap the end of this cross brace off. It's the uh, one right here. So we'll cap that one off. And then what we'll do is we'll manufacture and put a weld flange coming straight down off of this, uh, off of the bed itself. And then essentially that that uh, wheel well from the bed will get a flange that goes and that, that'll be spot welded into that weld flange. And then the um, wheelhouse inner will be spot welded to that. So it'll be three layers thick right there. And that's what they did from the factory. So that's what the plan is. And uh, we'll get uh, cleaning up on that. All right, well, got this cleaned up, got this uh, uh, brace cut back on both sides and kind of got this where I want. Got it trimmed up down in the uh, bottom as well. So um, at this point, we'll do a quick test fit of the panel that's going in there and see what she's looking like. All right, so I extricated the wheelhouse inner um, had to drill out a couple of bazillion spot welds um, where it was holding on to that brace that I or the weld flange that I had cut off um, did a little bit of trimming because um, as I'm putting it in there um, this actually did overlap the frame just a little bit so I trimmed it up around the frame so that um, it uh, can actually fit over it and slide in until we get that frame narrowed and spent some time cleaning up the whatever the tar or what seam sealer or I don't know this black goopy stuff that was all oh, man that stuff is stickier than a cheap motel mattress I'm telling you it was like whew. so I ended up actually uh, heating it up with a with a heat gun it's a stunk to high heaven and but it scraped off when it was hot, so that's a good thing. So anyways, we'll uh, drop this in here, kind of show you a little bit of where this is gonna sit.
It gets us pretty close, I think. But what that does is tucks that, uh, tucks that back to that seam in there. And if we uh, take a look and see where our measurements are at, uh, we'll kind of let that set in there to quick gander at how far we've got that moved back with the magic measuring stick and so on. Because we are just a little bit over an inch and a half, which is what I'm looking for because the, uh, the kit that we want to put in on the frame rails moves that frame rail in an inch and a half. That will give us room for uh, 335s. So I think that'll be plenty of tire up underneath there. Um, at least uh, 12, 13 inches of tire. So that's a good thing. And so we're going to go coilovers and so on on the, uh, on the rear. But that gets us tucked in from here back inch and a half. Um, we do have to, you know, I was planning on putting the wheelhouse inner in to a weld flange in here and then putting this piece onto that spot welding the three pieces together but found out kind of why it had that funny little dip in it because this has kind of a feature going across here where it dips in and that if the wheelhouse and the bed sits in here these two weld surfaces are not parallel or flat together unless that tucks in so I want that straight down into the bed so I'm actually going to have to uh, have to weld the um, the inner wheel well inside the bed right to the bed which is not any big deal that's where it was to start with so um, that'll clean up that, uh, that trashy looking seam and so on so uh, did make uh, did also make these pieces primered up the back side of them this is where our, this is our caps basically for um, those end pieces the braces that we uh, that we cut out so I'm gonna go ahead and get busy on welding those in and then um, we will start working on manufacturing a weld flange so sounds like a plan Okay, so the, uh, the caps are in on both sides and primered up. So um, basically, I think from the outline and profile, we are pretty close. What we've got to create next is a weld flange. So I'm thinking that we can go in here with something like a inch wide we've got to go from let's see we've got to go from this point right here around the the curve got to bridge this gap and then it's got to meet up here and kind of be flush with the top of the uh, smuggler's box in the uh, in the back side in there so um thinking about uh about an inch wide should do it and kind of conform to that curve and see if um, I'm gonna kind of temporarily uh, put that in place with some screws and then we'll do some test fitting on the 
um, on the inner. All right, well, here's the concept of the weld flange, just uh, like a one inch strip. I'm gonna uh, weld this edge to the bed and then it kind of swings around here and connects back to the back side of that, but that'll give me a spot to um, spot weld in the inner wheel well and that way make it uh, make it just part of all of that and then the wheel well itself actually fills uh, is used as as part of that floor pan there it's a little bracket in that corner that I gotta do a little figuring out and and be able to uh, put that in place but I'm gonna go ahead and tech in that um, weld flange I think it got it cut and fitted if you look at uh, the top view of that I mean basically just making the arc that is um, needed in order to weld that uh, uh, inner wheel well in so I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld that in get it cleaned up and and get the Zeus in there and then we will um, do the last bit of test fitting on that inner uh, inner wheelhouse and try and get that in place All right, so got the flange tacked in there. Just uh, screwed the uh, wheelhouse inner in there. And in theory, that should give us like the inch and a half or so that we were looking for. So that gap as we go along should be right around that uh, inch and a half. So I think we're uh, we're pretty close. There's a little bit of flexibility in in some of that, but I think from there that gets us the tire clearance that we are after. So what we need to do at this point is finish putting in that uh, that weld flange, get that cleaned up, and then um, gotta figure out a little bracket that goes that was kind of holding this backside, so uh, salvage that off the other one. We'll clean that up and try and get a, uh, get a fill in there. But then, in theory, all we should have to do is have an inch and a half wide strip um, tacked to that, and I do have to clean up this tar stuff on, uh, on this other portion of it, so that ought to smell good. So, anyways, I think we are on target, and uh, we'll uh, put the rest of that weld flange in and check back at that point. All right, so here's our completed weld flange. And got that ground down. Also, you know, on this portion of it, I did put a, uh, put a top plate in there to uh, um, sort of basically where the smuggler's box closes. May have to modify that later, but um, that gives rigidity into this, uh, into this curve. And also, um, reformed and stretched out. Hey, you guys don't want to know how many hours of my life I put into that silly bracket, but um, getting that floor pan so it meets up to the back of that uh, wheel well opening um, so we can close everything out there and got a weld flange down here and across here. So basically we are ready to put in and, and fit that uh, inner wheel well. So we'll, uh, we'll screw that up in place and then we'll go from there. All right, final uh, test fit, I guess, before this goes in there kind of permanently. 
Unfortunately, this, uh, um, this quarter panel extension, um, still a couple of days out and shipping, that's still gonna hold us up from, from getting that uh, completely welded in there and so on, but um, I went ahead and filled in some of the extra um, spot metal holes and so on so that we've got a uh, reasonable surface in there and ground that down a little bit but basically this is just going to fit up in there we have some hole guide holes here to keep it in place while we play with it this all screwed in there. Okay, so that's going to be our final position. Theoretically, if we uh, did everything right then basically just a inch and a half strip it's got to be put in between this piece and the uh, and that inner but that gets us in there an inch and a half so um, I think we are in pretty decent shape um, from that perspective but like I said got uh, ready to, to weld in there we'll get some primer and stuff on there but like I said, what's going to hold us up is, is going to be this uh, quarter extension. It does kind of come up behind here. It's just going to be a lot easier to uh, replace with this still out of the car. So I um, said that's a couple days away. So at this point, I think we can go ahead and, and fit that, uh, that inner um, panel in there and get that one ready to go in. And then once, uh, once we get the quarter extension, then everything will be able to weld all at one time so um, should be in pretty decent shape but uh, we'll uh, get on to fitting that inner panel by the way why do chicken coops only have two doors Because if they had four doors, they'd be chicken sedans. Okay, let's get some work done. Okay, so taking a look at this uh, wheelhouse inner, I want to make sure that we get a kind of a smooth um, transition on the floor going over these little humps here. Um, so I've got to do a little bit of straightening and grinding on that bottom in order to make it sit flat and kind of go up and over those uh, those bed rails. Really don't want to mess with those. So, um, But also want to try and flatten out that bottom. But um, one area that I'm... Uh, got a little bit of work to do where you see kind of where it's going to meet up there it's it's kind of got this little uh, flare up um, where I cut it so got this little curve so I got to do some hammer work on this inner portion in order to try and flatten that out and make that transition to that outer portion nice and smooth so um, I'm going to take that over to the vise and try and uh, smash on both of those and see if I can't get it flattened out and looking decent and make sure that we've got um, a good transition between the two and it looks, looks like it belongs there. That's really kind of my end goal. So we'll take it over and start from there.
Okay, so got the, some grinding done and got that fitted a little bit better down there. I uh, flattened out this portion where it had that uh, curve up. Not really happy with that though. I think what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to cut another inch and a half or so off of that. Um, that way I've got a chance to take this curve and then blend it nicely in a little bit lower. It means a little bit larger patch, but I think that'll be the way to go. Um, that metal uh, in that uh, wheel well, you know, as it, as it came up, when you pound it back down, it kind of doesn't like to shrink and stretch in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some more off. What the heck? So anyways, that's the, uh, that's the plan. And then we'll uh, get that kind of temporarily mounted up in there and try and figure out how to attach the two pieces. Oh, it's uh, like 42 degrees today. So doors are open, shorts are on. Life is good. It's, uh, it's warming up. All right, so chopped an extra inch and a half or so out, but I think that's uh, actually going to work out really good so I can uh, kind of taper that uh, taper that patch in there and be able to smooth that out so it looks like it belongs there. So I'm going to temporarily mount this with some straps, and then we'll get to the wonderful template tape. All right, so I got this pretty much where I think I, I want it for a final position. Um, marked it out on the floor, strapped it in with a, uh, with a few straps around there. And really now, um, since this radius on the inside is gonna be smaller than this radius on the outside, um, if we cut just a flat piece, it wouldn't fit in there. So I'm gonna have to make a template because once I lay this template flat, it's gonna come out a little curved and that'll give us uh, the right shape to go in there. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get out the magical template tape here and make ourselves a template of that. All right, so there's our uh, template. I think uh, well, the masking tape uh, kind of blends in. Maybe just uh, it's uh, painted in masking tape blue. I don't know. But uh, I'll pull this off, um, get it transferred to some sheet metal, and do a little bit of bending and fitting. So should be uh, should be ready to go with uh, um, at least trying to get uh, this piece to touch this piece again. So we'll go from there. Well, as I was telling you, this definitely did not come out to be a straight piece of uh, metal in there. So uh, it's good that we uh, were able to template that because there's just no way you can make a, uh, a straight piece uh, play with those curves and so on. So got this in here now. Just got to do a little bit of shaping and bending. And I think I'll do most of this by hand just to try and get the, the basic shape down. And then we can do the trimming as necessary. See how close we are on uh, all of the joints and things. See how good the template making skills are. I think the 
template was good, just didn't, uh, didn't really cut it straight, but, you know. Okay, that's getting us in the ballpark here, so. And I'm going to have to uh, take this uh, inner or the outer lip here and roll it up a little bit in order to try and match that because it does have kind of a, a little bit of a curve in there. So I'll do that uh, next. But I think the uh, length is pretty good. Got some. Uh, trimming to do, some grinding, and do a little bit of bending there. So um, I think for first stab at it, all that pretty decent. Now uh, I will make some make some marks, do some uh, do some grinding, a little bit more forming and bending so it lays in there nice and easy. See if we can get this uh, inner edge to match up because I think my plan is is that I'm gonna weld the um, inner and the patch together and that way when we do get that uh, inner wheel well in there then we can just set it in place and tack it all together so we do a little bit more shaping and fitting and come right back. Okay, after an hour or so of cutting and grinding and bending and some very minor swearing, my mom would have been proud of me and kept that to a minimum, but um, did get this formed. Um, I, I did put just a, a little bit of a up curve in this uh, outer edge here so what we've got is kind of a, a good mating surface up in there um, I've got some trimming to do on the body over here but I think for now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tack this these two pieces together um, and then I'll pull this off and do the majority of the welding from the bottom side um, that way you get uh, some minimal cleanup on the top side. I'm thinking ahead to being lazy with the grinder, but um, I think we'll throw some tacks in this and uh, pull it off and finish uh, finish welding. So um, that way we'll get uh, these kind of made it back together and we'll do some more grinding and fitting on this edge here. But I think we're, uh, we're good for now. Take this, uh, take this over to the vise and uh, finish welding up that uh, welding up that seam.
right, well, a little bit, uh, a little bit later, a little bit of grinding done, but uh, here's kind of fitting in the in the wheel well. Kind of really like the way that contour is. So I think uh, at this point we have a good weldable, finishable product here. So um, can clean up that uh, edge a little bit as we go along, but that contour looks good kind of all the way around and that I think will do and get this uh, kind of all pushed together and welded up when we get that uh, when we get that inner um, wheelhouse done I think we are uh, in good shape so I like the way that came out kind of kept the uh, contour a little bit of a swoop up but um, Almost looks like it, uh, like it could be factory, but uh, much better than just making some uh, some round, square-edged ones. I think like like uh, the way that these curves are and so on. So it's fitting pretty good. Does not interfere with the uh, with the inner, and I think we are uh, ready to go. So hopefully that uh, um, quarter extension panel arrives soon so that we can kind of get all of that done. But while I'm waiting for that, I think uh, it's time to start on the other side. That's gonna wrap it up for this edition of Let's Get Dirty Garage. It's, uh, it's a long process, so, but it'll be worth it in the end. Hey, listen, thanks a lot for getting dirty with me today. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends, your family, we, I really appreciate it. And leave me a comment, let me know how you think things are going and, and uh, we'll pick this up and finish it up next time, I, I hope. But uh, anyways, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.